This is Coach Lee, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how your ex tests you. Click the subscribe button so you can be notified when I have more videos like this, and that includes videos on attraction, mindfulness, marriage, getting an ex back, and success. The no contact rule, which I talk about a lot in my videos, works a lot of the time. It doesn't work every single time, but it does work a lot of the time, and I'm basing this on two decades of experience, observing this in a professional capacity. So I'm not just telling you something that sounds good or repeating what I've seen in other people's videos. And what it will do a lot of times is it will reattract your ex to a point. It will have them reconsider the breakup to a point. They will doubt the breakup to a point. And they kind of want to test you and to test the waters just to see what their options are. And what's interesting is that a lot of the time they could not even tell you that they were testing you or that they planned to test you or that they were testing the waters. They wouldn't even know that's exactly what they were doing. It's just something that's kind of instinctive, sort of like checking the water before we get in. Is the water too hot? Is it too cold? We just kind of reach our hands in to see, which is another reason why you shouldn't ignore your ex because the reason they're testing the water is to see if they should even bother proceeding or to see if maybe they need to wait a little bit longer. But a lot of the time it's to see if they should bother proceeding at all. And so ignoring them basically to a lot of people will just say, you messed it up. Don't even bother. And your ex, no matter how bad they hurt, will just do their best to move on. I have a video about whether or not you should ignore your ex. I will link to that in the description below and you can take a look at what I say about that. But the bottom line is that most of the time, your ex will not just reach out and say, I made a mistake, let's get back together. Now you will notice that in other videos and sometimes in the comments when I'm able to respond, that when someone says, I did the dumping, I broke up with my ex, should I use the no contact rule? That's a bit of a pet peeve question of mine because in some ways, it almost seems arrogant to me that you would ask that, but I get that that's not what you're thinking most of the time. You're not coming from a position of arrogance. You're just curious. But if you did the dumping, no, you should not use the no contact rule. You should reach out. You should tell them, I have messed up. I'm so sorry. Would you please consider taking me back? Now, if they did something awful, yes, it's a different type of situation. But then I would wonder, do you really want them back? But if they didn't do something awful and breaking up with them was a mistake and you want them back, you should be the one to reach out. That person who did the dumping should be the one to reach out and they should make it easy. It should be, I messed up my breaking up with you. Will you please consider taking me back? That's what would happen in a perfect world. But unfortunately, not every person who does the dumping consults me or sees a video of mine. And so they are left to their own meanderings and often they will reach out with a casual text to test you. And I'm going to go over a few different ways that your ex will test you. The first one is pretty basic. Your ex will test you by reaching out with something really almost insultingly casual, like what's up or how's it going? Maybe a slightly less shallow version would be how's life going? Or how are you? And it's amazing how that's the number one texted message from an ex after they've broken up with you and you have used no contact is they will say something that basic. And there's a mixture of responses from the person in your shoes, in the shoes of the person who was dumped, because sometimes people are just so excited to get a message from their ex at all that they respond and they're excited in the way they respond and they carry the conversation and they go a little too far and they can push the person away. So as I talked about in the video before this one, where I go over what you do when your ex reaches out, I say, you don't tell them I've missed you so much. I'm so glad you've reached out to me. That may be true. And there will be a time and place for that where you will be able to say that. But at the moment, you don't want to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. You don't want to take away your victory is what I'm saying. And so 
You want to let them keep coming to you. You want this to be slow. You don't want to spook them away because in most cases, they are exploring the possibility of getting back with you. They're not ready to just name it at the moment. And so you want to be knowledgeable of that when you respond to them. But yes, a simple message like that is a test. First of all, it's a test to see if you will even respond because your ex might be thinking that you will be so upset that you won't respond, that maybe you've moved on so you won't respond, that maybe you're with someone else so you won't respond, or maybe you've changed your number so there won't be a response. So they kind of want to get their bearings just a little bit. And yes, that's a test. Quick commercial break to answer a question. Is it good that they're testing you? Yes, it is. Because if they had no interest, they wouldn't be testing the water. If you weren't thinking about taking a bath, what do you care if it's too hot? You need to know that. But you also need to be reserved. You need to be slow intentionally in the way that you respond. And again, I go over a lot of that in my video about what to do when an ex breaks no contact and reaches out. And I will link to that in the description below. But just know, a test is a good thing because it does mean your ex is considering it. But you are not done yet. You need to still behave yourself. You need to still respond reasonably and logically so that you don't actually push your ex away. Another way that your ex will test you, and a lot of times this comes after they have at least determined that you will reach back out, that you'll respond, and they know that you're not just furious at them and that you're not going to ignore them, they will start to get a little deeper, a little more to the heart of what they're testing. Because you see, when they're testing you, they're doing one of a few things, and it can all be the same thing, just in different timing. For example, at first, your ex will want you to feed their ego. Because if you've been doing no contact, their ego is starving. They want to know that you still want to get back together with them. And I go over this a lot, but the bottom line is, is that when your ex breaks up with you, they get a wonderful little ego butt kiss. They just feel so attractive. Even if they're a good person, they don't want to hurt you. But when you break up with someone, you feel more attractive than them because you're the one dismissing them. If you were as attracted to them as they are to you, you'd want to stay because they want to stay. And so if you use the no contact rule, their ego falls some because you're not acting like someone who's attracted to them. You're not chasing. And so they want you to fix that for them. They want you to restore them to that level of where they just feel super darn sexy because they're not quite feeling that way right now because you haven't played your part. And so they want you to take away all doubt and let them know you still want them back. And so they can just go back off into the land where they were before, thinking that they can get you back whenever they want you, that they're super attractive and it's an awesome place to be. Would you please give them a ticket back to that wonderful land? No, you won't because you're watching this video and you know better. You're going to play this casually and politely. You're not going to give them clues that you want them back. I have a video about clues they'll give you that show they want you back, but you're not giving that away. Sure, you're going to be polite. You're going to be casual. You're going to be pleasant. You may even be a little bit flirty if you were to see them face to face. That's just because that's who you are. That's because you're following your heart in this. But whether or not you want them back, hmm. They're going to have to wonder about that one. And the way that you do that is you don't let them know either way. I go over this in more detail in my emergency breakup kit. And I will link to that in the description below. But take a look at that. It's the culmination of my 20 years in the relationship coaching service, helping people get their exes back. You give them something to have to wonder about where they have to dissect the conversation. Well, he did say this. Maybe he wants me back. Oh, but he said this. Maybe he doesn't. She said this. Maybe she wants me back. <sighs> but she also said this. So I don't know. That's what you want to go on in the mind of your ex. And I'm not saying at all that you try to say things that sound contradictory. Because if they feel like you're playing games with them, that's just going to tell them you want them back. Because you wouldn't be playing games 
unless you wanted some sort of response from them and that you were trying to cause the two of you to get back together, trying to cause them to chase you or something like that. So you're not playing games, but when you're casual and polite, they can take even basic things and they can put a different filter on them based on what they're thinking about. So you don't have to try to do these things. A normal conversation will do just what you needed to do. You won't even have to try. Just pretend like you're talking to a friend. And I'm sure that that really hit several of you and you're thinking, but I don't want to get in the friend zone, Coach Lee. That's, I can't believe you even said that. I'm going to let you in on a little secret when it comes to the friend zone. The friend zone depends on whose terms it's on. For example, if someone is very, very attracted to you, you would be the one who would put them in the friend zone. If you were very attracted to them, you would be the one to allow them to put you in the friend zone. And if they are reaching out to you, they're testing you, they're showing that there's some attraction there, that they're moving towards you. That's when you behaving like a friend, though you can be occasionally flirty here and there. You just don't want to be complimentary. You don't want to request things like, I'd love to see you or I miss you and I wish we could do X, Y, Z together. But being naturally flirty, even friends who are members of the opposite sex will be that way with each other sometimes. And if that part confuses you, just forget that part. Let's just focus on during a conversation, if you were just behaving like you would with any of your friends, you see, that's where it can be frustrating for them because they're wanting you to alleviate that concern that they have, that you might not want them back because that hurts their ego. And when you're friendly, when you just treat them like a friend and you do this because they are the ones moving towards you, they are the ones reaching out to you. But when you treat them that way, it leaves all these clues that they can sit there and obsess over, that they can become preoccupied with, that will give them no answers, which is much more powerful than giving them an answer. When you get an answer, it's like, okay, there it is, done. When you don't have the answer, you think about it for hours, daily. You worry about it. You try to figure it out. You seek the answer. And that's what you want to do. And so, yes, if they're testing you, this is another way that it could be done, where they could say something like, did you have fun this weekend? Who'd you hang out with this weekend? Did you hang out with anybody this weekend? And like I said, the first little layer, the first little stage of the testing is just kind of a generic, how are you doing? What's up? Then they might move into what have you been doing? Which would be, what'd you do this weekend? Did you go out with anybody? Did you have fun? They're trying to figure out if there's anybody else in the picture. You see, they're easing into this. And so they're testing you so that you can either pass the test to the point that they feel like they can move forward, but they're not sure if you want them back completely or not because you're not really giving them clues, but you're not pushing them away either. And so the way that you keep them testing you, keep them moving towards you is by doing that. So when they ask you, what'd you do this weekend? You can be vague, but you can also be specific in terms of how much fun you had, or you can tell them that you didn't do anything. It all kind of depends on how you phrase it. You could say something like, I had a lot to do, and so I was just resting this weekend. You don't have to always try to give them something to be concerned about or make them jealous. And you certainly shouldn't try to make them jealous. Honesty is usually the best approach, but you can always frame it in the best light possible. And it's okay if they don't think that there's definitely someone else in the picture. As long as you're not absolutely telling them there's not, you give them enough concern because you've been using the no contact rule. As the testing continues to unfold, they may ask something like, are you dating anyone? And this is when they are beginning to get a little more comfortable while also becoming a little more frustrated. They're more comfortable because you are interacting with them. You two are having longer conversations. They feel comfortable again with you and they feel frustrated because they don't know for sure if there's anybody else. Now, this is where a lot of people will leave comments and they'll say, what do I do when they ask if I'm dating somebody else? Because this is a no brainer. You know, they are interested or else they wouldn't be asking this. So first of all, honesty is definitely the best policy because 
You certainly don't want them finding out that you were lying about it, trying to make them jealous when there wasn't anybody. And by saying there's somebody, a lot of times that's just going to blow up in your face because they won't know how to proceed or if you want them to proceed, they might even think, well, they don't have a chance, so why would they? So what I usually suggest is, especially if you're on the phone and it's an actual conversation, that you say something like this when they say, are you dating anyone? Try to figure that out. In other words, do something like, hmm, not really. Just like that. Now they may get more specific. What do you mean not really? And that's where, again, honesty is the best policy. If they say, Did, are you going out with anybody? Have you gone out with anybody? Tell them the truth. If that's no, and if the breakup is only a few months old, that makes a lot of sense because you do need time to heal. I go over that in some of my other videos that it's not just you waiting around on them, even though that's your choice. There's nothing wrong with waiting to see because if you have a lot of time invested of your life into this relationship and you really care about this person, there's nothing wrong with just taking a break from romance just to see if this person comes back. It's also very good for you. So if the honest answer is, no, you haven't, just say, no, I haven't. The fact that you did the, um, a little bit of uncertainty kind of suggests that maybe you had something in mind. It at least shows that you are open to the idea of dating other people at some point in the future, which is really all that you need because you see the arrogance of the dumper puts them in a position where they assume without really giving it a lot of thought that you will never ever date anyone else, that you will be easily gotten back if they ever want you back, that you will just remain a backup plan. And so it's usually when you allow them to see that as being untrue, when you allow them to worry that it's not true, when you allow them to see a sample of you staying away from them, which is what you do during no contact, that's when that fantasy land of theirs is shown to be a lie because they can lose you. And up until they start to see you doing no contact, you're not chasing, you're not acting like that person who's attracted to them, they will assume they can. So that's why they test you is because when they first start to see that you are behaving like someone who could be lost, who could move on, who is showing clearly that you can stay away, they will test you to see if they could still get you back. But that also means that it's at least something they're considering. If this person's an outright narcissist, then perhaps then they would just mess with you just because they, they want to put you in backup plan just to feed their ego and have absolutely no interest in getting back together with you. But if this is a good person, a genuine person, then their testing is actually a sign that they are considering this. And let me just encourage you again, be reserved. If they start to be more direct in terms of saying, would you be interested in getting back together? Or what would you say if I said that I was reconsidering things? Again, they're trying to get you to clean up their mess in a lot of ways. Because instead of saying, I want to get back together with you, I miss you, I was wrong, will you please take me back? Like they should. They're wanting to know ahead of time what you would say if they did. And yes, I know that's not ideal and that's frustrating, but it is what it is, and they are coming to you from the position that they are in, whatever that's in. It actually gives you an opportunity to show more strength and to make sure they know that you are not just going to jump back in, that you're not going to be easily gotten back. So, for example, if they were to say, what would you say if I said that I was thinking about us getting back together or I was reconsidering things? You can say something like, well, I'd be open to that, but I'd really want to take things slowly. You see how, again, that's not a 100% yes answer, but it's also not a no. It's just enough to make them have to wonder about it, to make them have to hope for it. That they haven't gotten it, but they're hoping they can get it. And so it keeps them moving towards you. It keeps that attraction pulling them like a magnet. And so you can use testing to your advantage. They will say certain things that, again, it's trying to get you to clean up their mess, but it's also something that doesn't seem as direct about that. And they're trying to see more about how you see the future. And so they may say something like, what do you see us like in the future? Or do you ever see us getting back together in the future? Or how do you see your future? Or they may say, where do you see me in your future? Which is an odd thing for someone who dumped you to say. And yet it's actually said, maybe not in those exact words, but it's actually said a lot. And they're trying 
to really see how open you are to getting back together. And they're trying to see if you still see them as someone you want to be in a relationship with, a romantic relationship with. And it's really, it's just another form of them wanting to see how attracted you still are to them. If they are still this one that is sought after and lusted after and desired. Again, they're wanting a little bit of an ego stroke. But part of it too is they're wanting to see how the water feels. They're wanting to test the water and see if you'd be open to getting back together before they even try. There's no textbook on how to break up with someone and then change your mind and tell them and get them back. And so they're just kind of trying things. And a lot of times it will just hit them in the moment. They won't have a plan. So give them a little bit of grace, but just remember your response is important. So don't just give it all back to them. Keep it slow. Keep your response saying, I'm open but I'm not certain and I want to take it slow and I'm not just going to give this all back to you, though you wouldn't use those exact words. Be sure to take a look at my emergency breakup kit because I talk about this a lot more thoroughly in there. You can get it on my website, myexbackcoach.com, and I will link to that in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can get more information like this. You can be notified when I have more videos like this. Just hit that subscribe button below. Like this video if you like it and you can leave me a tip in my tip jar if this was valuable information for you. This has been Coach Lee, and as always, thank you for watching.